All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of Into the Lion's Den with your hosts, Dirty D, <laughs> J.D. Stevens, and Christian Griffith, brought to you proudly by Pride Roofing and Construction. Still not going to do it. Lachlan, do it. There we go. <laughs> just very quietly in the background. Wow. Come on, guys. We're all just big cats. Uh, okay, so today we are going to move into the next topic in our entrepreneur series, mm -hmm. whatever we want to call it. And we're going to be talking about challenges and failures. So. Today, I get to talk to you guys about uh, some of the lowest points and dumbest things that we've done, and uh, I hope I don't get too upset, um, but these are learning lessons, so let's fail forward together, right? Absolutely. Challenges is going to be uh, pretty universal as far as everyone's going to run into things. So we're specifically going to talk about what are some of the major setbacks and failures we experienced and how they how they inf how they affected us as a business and then any emotional or practical steps that we took to overcome those that's going to be our first major point is the major setbacks so in you know we're this series is specifically covering the first 5 years and the major setbacks that we have experienced. Uh, we talked about one very briefly of the, you know, influx of staff and then the so dissolution of that staff and then an influx and how that's kind of just part of the deal with the growing business. So that was one of the first ones that we talked about uh, and referenced in last week's episode if you want to check that out. Um, but we definitely are going to continue with some of the other major setbacks. What are things that you ran into? It could be CRM problems. Maybe we started with one system that really didn't fit our needs or we've started with multiple and the inefficiencies that come with that. It could be uh, staff. It could be a large portion of like learning how to understand the business financially and the setbacks that happen just due to financial reasons. Sure. Um, I can give you some smaller examples and some bigger examples. Okay. Um, so setbacks that we've, you know, and the thing about the setbacks um, that you experience as an entrepreneur or business owner or, you know, higher level executive in a startup or whatever you want to call whatever your position is, um, they're all self-induced, right? Um, you don't know what you don't know until you know it. That's, you know, the overall, you know, summary of just about all of it. And I mentioned at the very beginning, fail forward. So uh, it's important as a business owner or somebody who's, you know, walking down some form of adventure where you're building something to understand that resilience applies and humility um, exacts, right, in everything that you do. So what I mean by that is, like, you have to understand that you're not perfect. You have to understand that you will make poor choices, and you have to have the intestinal fortitude to take those, you know, acknowledge those errors that you make and say, I did this, I don't want to feel this again, and use that as your fuel to adjust it and and move forward, you know, adapt and overcome. So there's some pretty simple setbacks. Um, for instance, one of the main missions that we had when we first started the business was, and we started to actually be able to purchase things um, and then, you know, grow in certain ways, was that we made a, um, a statement that we wanted to appear to be a 20-year-old roof company within our first two years. And what that meant um, was we wanted, from the outside view, our marketing and our vehicles and our buildings and stuff like that to all look so professional and so well put together and so expansive that we appeared to be a, 
fully suited operation that's been around for a very long time, right? And it's not as a way to like pull the wool over anybody's eyes, but in the, in a saturated market like the roofing construction world, you've got to be different. And a way to be different is to appear that you have your shit together better than everybody else does, right? Mm -hmm. So that was, <laughs> it was a setback at the beginning, but then turned out to have some incredible dividends later on down the road. But at the beginning, you know, we didn't have effective cash flow strategies the same that we do now. We didn't have the same understanding of the seasonality of things, and uh, we didn't have any KPIs, data, or anything to reference um, historically to be able to know when we can spend some of this money in the cash account and when we cannot, and when it needs to stay there for standard expenses and, and job costs and whatever. So that was actually really hard because we dumped so much in to marketing and, you know, wraps and whatever that we didn't have enough money to onboard more personnel. Um, we didn't have enough money to, um, essentially run a effective business that's not continually biting your nails on are we going to make it to the next weekend or not, <laughs> right? Okay. So we induced a lot of incredible stress, a lot of incredible stress. And what that does is when the heads of the organization have incredible stress on their shoulders, it's pretty darn impossible to not wear that on your face and not wear that in your actions and your mannerisms and things like that. And we unfortunately, although we've always focused on culture, created a culture that was in a scarcity mindset and we were always harping on collecting faster and building quicker and blah, 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 blah. And it put a lot of, uh, we cast our stresses on people around us. And when, you know, you don't, as a, as a business owner, you have an, in, an invisible weight it's sitting on me right now on this camera in this room of all of the obligations that I have and guarantor signatures that I have on different documents and all of the accounts that we have in process that we have these promises for. There's a lot of weight on your shoulders all the time that you can't really you can't really discuss because it generally gets mis misconstrued when you discuss it. If you discuss it in the wrong circles of people, it's interpreted as we're failing or we're doing something wrong or I better go find a new job because these guys can't get it together and they're admitting that or whatever it is. It could just be venting, right? But it puts a lot of unnecessary stress on team members, which ultimately leads to either turnover or lack of productivity because people are spinning in circles or focus on the wrong things. So, you know, you're double tripling your efforts in something that's not actually going to produce with the result that you want and you're working on a hamster wheel. Um, a lot of the time. So that, w that was one of the setbacks. But like I said, it, it, it transpired into dividends, right? The marketing that we have, nobody, I mean, if you live in northern Colorado, you know who Pride Roofing and Construction is. We are loud enough with our marketing, with our everything that we have, that if you don't know what we do, you still know our logo, right? Mm -hmm. So we achieved that, and that's really, really powerful because we are not, you know, when our door knockers go out, they're not being, you know, like looked at like they're, you know, just a, a thief in a in a suit or in you know in a contractor getup or whatever. They're like, oh, I know who you are. Let's talk a little bit. And it, it, it's it's played a lot towards increased productivity and volume down the road. But at the beginning, it was a, it's definitely something we probably should have went low and slow with. So. <laughs> Spread out over a little bit more time, potentially. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's one setback. Um, setbacks can happen. This is this is this one's one that I'm gonna have a hard time articulating. Um, but setbacks can also happen in the form of your planning, right? Um, for instance, you know, I'm not gonna say anything real negative here. And if I you know start to go that direction, please stop me because I don't I don't want to live in the past in this, but. I was in a, like, when I started the business with my ex-business partner, I chose somebody who we were not equally yoked. And not in terms of, like, our capacity or our abilities and, and things like that. It's just our, we were wired differently, right? I had to do, I had to do one way I wanted to run the organization. He had one way he wanted to run or, or in the organization. And that led to a lot of friction, a lot of times where we were butting heads, Sometimes in front of people, sometimes not in front of people, but you knew that it happened because these walls are so short that everybody knows what's going on, you know, stuff like that. And ultimately led to um, 
you know, the purchase. I had to purchase the rest of the business from from Chris. There was more to that. Don't need to go into that. But I, I purchased the rest of the business because it was very clear we weren't going to be able to continue to do this as a two headed snake, uh, two headed monster, or whatever you want to call it, right? So um, that was an incredible setback. Um, when that happened, I basically became completely ineffective in a role that I had once led, right? So over the course of the first you know, three years of the business, my personal sales volume, because like I've always mentioned on here, I'm more of a... Uh, a more of a Captain America type of person, like I'm in the I'm in the field with you. Um, it's like let's go rather than you go type of leadership. Lead from and the front. Lead from the front, right? And um, I my my sales personally had resulted in over forty percent of our entire company's volume over the first three years. And at that point, I essentially had to stop selling and fix all of the broken things. Right? That was a big setback. We probably went two years in the past, I and mean, we were at year three, but we rewound right back to year one and had to start all over, right? So, um, you know, that those, those are the things that you should definitely, if you're intending or if you're, you know, in the midst of all this stuff is really evaluate who it is that you're working with. Make sure that this is something where you guys know that your, your, your morals are in line, your thoughts are in line, your vision is in line, um, the way that you want to manage things are in line, the way you lead is in line, because if you're not a unified front, you're bound to just create incredible amounts of additional work and eventual failure. Yeah, you can, because you can also have that, when we're, when we're talking about the unequal yoke, that's specifically with ox, and if you pull at a different rate, you get off course. Uh -huh. And so, sometimes, because I was here during those early days, there was times it felt like the ox was doing this. So we're trying to we're trying to move forward in a straight row and it feels there was times when it felt like we were doing one yeah. of these numbers. Yeah. We're going we, we're going in different directions and instead of plowing the field, we're breaking harnesses. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that's I think when I think of the major setbacks, that's one of the main ones that runs through of like that I've experienced and seen of the unequal yoking if we talk about that of the desire to run an organization so make sure that you know specifically make sure that when you are partnering if you're in a situation where you're partnering with someone you guys are going to drive in the same direction mm -hmm. and that needs to be understand through like good business plan and things like that of this is the direction we're driving here's where I sit as far as in that we're on this highway. I'm navigating based here, and then you're driving, but we are navigating to the same place. Mm -hmm. So we're a, we're a tandem unit, and the importance of that I think can, like you said, lead to that major setback of like it feels like now because I experienced it, it's a completely different organization. Yeah, mm -hmm. and but you lost. We, we lost a lot of momentum initially. Uh, we had an amazing team at that time. We were able to fairly fairly easily at least keep pace. Mm -hmm. It's just we didn't grow a whole lot mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah, so like, and we had to reframe procedures, and we had to go back to the, the, the basics of the basics and make sure that all of it was in line. I mean, that's the reason that we brought in a, a business consultant. I mean, that was the main reason I bought it. I brought in a business consultant and paid those large fees for it is because I needed an outside perspective to help me make sure that my vision was actually being tooled away at in, in, in correct motion, right? Mm -hmm. We're not turning wrenches the wrong direction and, it's in, in, you know, stripping bolts. Like, let's make sure that everything is fine-tuned. We know what we're doing. Everybody has a role and responsibility because when I absorb the other half of the responsibility – my time can't be dedicated in the field the way that it was before. So I have to elect those other people who I trust to do those things. And then if in order to do that, I've got to create ways for them to report back so I can gauge whether they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. I've got to create ways where I can train them to do it. And, and it's all set in front of them. So it's not a person, it's a position. And it's something that if this person doesn't last, you have to start thinking from that perspective. When you have that type of huge l loss or whatever you want to call it, you set up your business in a way where you depend on an individual individual 
and then you cannot operate without that individual, you are in a real bad position, mm -hmm. right? And, it, and maybe that person never wants to leave, but maybe they're forced to leave. Maybe it's a car wreck. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's they've got to move across this, you know, the country because they have to take care of their parents or something like that, and they're forced to be gone. They never wanted to go. It, it doesn't matter what the reason is, but if you depend on this person for whatever it is, you're setting yourself up for some kind of incredible setback in the future when that does happen. Because let's just be fair, not everybody is a career person at any business. I mean, you guys watching this, you can probably attest you've been in five, six, seven, eight, nine jobs at this point. You've grown in each of those, but you might have grown into an integral part, but that business is still running because they were smart enough to know to play to the position, not to the person. Correct. I, mean, I think we called it at that time as kind of... We use humor in every situation here. Mm -hmm. So we, we call it the bus strategy. If you were to get hit by a bus tomorrow, mm -hmm. who can pick up the pieces? And we found with that consultation of like, we had a lot of like, oh. Oh, crap. Yeah. There's a lot of places <laughs> where, so much so that when we were creating the like job descriptions and I was, you know, I helped a lot in that process of writing those job descriptions and really ref refining what people are doing. And all of a sudden we're finding re these three people are doing the same job mm -hmm. um, or, or like they're overlapping and everything. And I was like, no, the, you do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we had such a hard time breaking it away from the name mm -hmm. of like, I can see all of the drafts because I've kept all of it of like, it's, this person's job description instead of what ended up being. Yeah, we, we had to detrain de things <laughs> like an ad nauseum, right? Yeah. Because it, even when you write it on a board and you're trying to write out a workflow, we're writing the name down on the person who's responsible rather than their title, right? If you want to scale a business, you don't scale with names involved with mm -hmm. it because you got to replicate each one of those names in the next unit, right? And if you can't, you don't have a way of replicating that person and somebody else. You have a failure within your mechanism. Point blank, point blank and period. Yeah, and that was, I mean, I think that that was a, it was a setback, but it was also that failing forward. Mm -hmm. We were able to take what could have been a huge setback of like if someone leaves or, you know, like you said, gets hit by the bus, that analogy we used. Um we sat down and we started creating a smart titles. I think that was another, if I talk about setbacks from my point of view of like where I sit of, and a lot of young companies do this and companies in general of like, we hand out meaningless titles, um, uh, to make people feel good. And I'm, you and I have talked about it and like titles really don't mean anything, mm -hmm. um, to me. However, to some people, they mean everything mm -hmm. of like, this is how I am graded in this, you know, it's, don't get me wrong, it's nice to be able to tell someone like, yeah, I'm the manager of this. When you're in a marketing or like a networking situation, but there was so many like, and it, again, in my opinion, bloated titles mm -hmm. uh, that we had to fight back of like, we had handed like, there were director positions and things like that. And it was like, you don't manage anybody. Mm -hmm. You're not a director of anything. The only person in your department is you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Direct um, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. you're a coordinator. Well, it, and it, it poses long-term problems. Correct. You, you got to think about those things when you're, when you're doing that, right? Cre creating a ladder. And something to ascend is a really great way to be able to create a long-term investment from somebody, right? But if your second rung on the ladder is director, right? There's nowhere to go. <laughs> There's nowhere to go, right? So, you, so you know, you've got four people in your business and three of them are directors, you know, or what, whatever the case may be. I'm not saying that we were that bad, but I'm just saying it's like, Correct. where are you going to grow from that? Everybody's going to be a chief of something. And then, you know, when you have instead of 10 people, you have 100 people. 
how are you ever going to keep people when you have to demote to those titles, reconstruct everything, change the, the compensation structures, and somehow hope that you sell it to them good enough that this title is just as good as the other one? You know, <laughs> Correct. And I think that that was one thing specifically that a lot of young entrepreneurs are going to struggle with is – you have somebody very valuable and you want to you want to show them how valuable they are so you give them a title but you don't think about the far reaching aspects of that title of like hey right now there's nothing wrong with being in a small startup of you're a manager of this because then there's still a lot more room to go or even just a like a coordinator mm -hmm. of like you're or the a or a lead or yeah. You know, there's there's plenty of different things, and I'm, I'm with you. I'm 100 percent with you. I've never cared what my title was. Yeah. Right. I know I know what investment I put into things. You know, I'm, I'm more subscribed to the Navy SEAL mantras. It's like, I know what I did in the dark. Right. It doesn't need to shine in the light. Yeah. So and, and you know and so that that for me, it didn't make sense until it started to make sense through other people, right? Like. We were trying to expand a division, but the first person we hired into that division is the director, although now we've got five people and they happen to be the lowest performer. Like, what are we going to do? Correct. You've, create, you've accidentally created a like, hey, we have a really high performer who can come in and has more experience, actual certification, and can elevate mm -hmm. a department. But we have somebody sitting in a director role mm -hmm. or like... And that's why, you know, the title game can be very important mm -hmm. uh, is now how do I, like you said, how do we frame this? Also, we potentially, you know, set a salary that was like, wow, now to hire someone at a second position or like we're going to put that person above this person. Now we all of a sudden have to pay a huge salary yeah. because we were paying this high level uh, name, mm -hmm. not necessarily – uh, that they were capable of the full position. Um, so I, I think that that can be a setback. I think it's a huge stumbling block for a lot of young businesses because you don't realize it until it's, until you realize it. Yeah. It's one of those ones of like, like you said, we went to expand a division and you go, oh, I've created a real pickle. <laughs> and, a, and the pickle is going to result in somebody's feelings getting hurt. Correct. All right. And, and you know, in this day and age... <laughs> feelings are everything. Right? It's not facts, not logic. It's feelings and emotion, yeah. right? And so, you know, you got to work with that within an organization. So plan smart, you know, um, and be a good salesperson because sometimes you have to sell that shit. So, so sometimes dealing in setbacks of what we're talking about of like that moving forward with people. Sometimes the setback is competitors. Sometimes you run across things with competition. Um, we've talked about it specifically of. There's a lot of people that work in what they consider gray area, but is really black and white. And so how do we deal with competitors and establish our folks? Um, and then the strategies, strategies to differentiate, differentiate ourselves in the market. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say something that sounds egotistical as it comes out of my mouth, but it's not meant that way. It's just facts more ego. <laughs> um, I don't feel as though there's many people in the Colorado market who are truly a competitor of ours. Um, I look at competitors like Linear Roofing out of Texas and um, Apple Roofing out of Florida and California. Those are the types of competitors that I want to model after. They're mm -hmm. the ones that I would consider to be who everybody should aspire to be like. They're the types of organizations where they're worthy of trying to mimic, right? Okay. Um, and so our, our local market, there are some really good cats. There are some really good cats, and you don't know who they are until you've bit up against them most of the time. Um, you rub elbows with them as certain things and, and whatever. But um, it's completely saturated by, let's just call them aspects. I don't, I don't know any other way to put it, right? There's, there's an incredible amount of people who have zero ethical grounding. They would steal your shirt off your back and not give you theirs, right? If this was, no, there were no cameras on them, 
and they had an opportunity to steal something or hurt someone, they would. Right, and that's the unfortunate position that all of us are in in this particular industry. So I don't find them to be competitors. I find them to be an obstacle that I need to get, that I need to get past. That's all that I look at them as, right? Um, and so that's part of our mission statement as an organization, uh, or not mission statement, but that's just part of our um, foundational motivating things that we talk about, which is that we are going to be so good at this business that everybody is forced to model the way that we do it. Right, uh, with standards, with ethics, with transparency, with you know, offering offering things that are that are real, not fictitious, not teaching our salespeople to be liars, you know, so on and so forth. There's a lot of layers to that type of conversation, right? Um, so in terms of competition, I wouldn't say that any competitor has ever really caused any form of setback for us. Um, but there have been some, you know, some things that have been below the belt, um, I guess, in the industry that, that, that caused us to actually adjust towards it, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of those setbacks are people that we've created as our competition, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think at this point now, we have developed six new roofing companies out of Pride Roofing and Construction, right? Um, and so, and that's just, you know, people thinking that they can do it better and people thinking that they weren't getting paid enough or whatever the case may be, and they went out and did it on their own. But um, unfortunately, none of them are really doing very good. So, you know, it's like maybe that's karma. I don't know. But, <laughs> but anyways, um, that's kind of a setback because it's frustrating. It makes you start to question whether you should give everybody your, your, your formula, whether you give them your sheet, secret recipe. There's a reason, you know, grandmas don't hand out their secret recipe to anybody, right? It's literally given away in their, you know, uh, their will and handed to somebody, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like they don't, if you don't want people to have it, then don't share it. But it's not, that's also at the same time, not a very good way to be able to grow and develop professionals within your organization. So instead of holding things and, and controlling things and hiding things, we've taken the stance of um, let's just be very effective with qualifying the people that we're going to trust to know our secrets, right? Know our plans, know our actions, because if you can qualify them there, then you don't necessarily have to worry about the theft later on down the road. Right. Um, so those are those are setbacks that you're going to endure. You are going to create your competition from people that you once cared about. Um, just deal with it. Right. And I mentioned that in the last episode. I have lost many of relationships because of this business. And it's, you know, it was no it was not purposeful. It just eventually happened. Right? Yeah. The, um, I think maybe that co the competition quite question that we could go through is who do you consider your competition also of like what you're talking about of we put ourselves against people we want to be like mm -hmm. so you know we look at all of those different mm -hmm. all those different competitors and it's just like sure there are other folks here in the in our area that do great things but this is who we're competing against because we want to be like them mm -hmm. and yeah. so I think that's a, that's another huge thing that as a young entrepreneur, you could take away of mm. this is who I'm competing against. Not necessarily all the people that are at the same level as me, mm -hmm. but the person that I actually want to compete against in the future. Mm -hmm. And how do I become like them, but also to make myself different from them? Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not trying to make it sound conceited or anything like that, but I'm not sending secret shoppers into you know, our, our competitors doors. I'm not asking my guys to go incognito with their resume and go get hired somewhere else. So I know their tactics and their strategies and things like that. I know that happens. That happens in every business. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of moles and things like that. Right. I'm never going to do that with any of these competitors. They're not the model that I want to have. I don't need their secrets. Which is fair. I think that the, you know, kind of the speaks to the, difference that we're trying to set of I've kind of always ascribed to the I want to be the Kobe Bryant of whatever I do I want everyone to know that I'm great I don't need to tell them right everybody knows I'm great because of my effort and what I do I don't need to tell how amazing I am to people I 
basketball fans are going to hate this, but I don't want to be the LeBron. I don't want to have to tell everyone I'm great. Yeah, you are great. Mm. But you also spend a lot of time telling me how great you are, <laughs> which makes me not love it. It makes me not think you're that great. Um, <laughs> whereas Kobe was great because he didn't have to talk about how great he was. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan was great because he didn't have to talk about how great he was. Mm -hmm. um, Tiger Woods, great because he doesn't have to talk about how great he is. But so that's that's That's, I mean... There, you could have an entire podcast about this particular conversation and just leadership in general. Yeah. You don't need to tell people if your actions show. Correct. Right? And in fact, generally the loudest ones are the most insecure ones. So they know that they're missing the mark. So they're trying to make up for it by being loud and being distracting. Well, no, I mean, that, but that is the case. And that's the way I wish that everybody would look at it, right? When storms happen, I mean, this 5, 10, 15 minute event, Maximal. I've never seen anything last more than forty-five minutes when it comes to actual true hail impact and stuff. It's gonna be it's gonna be damaging to tens of thousands of homes within mm -hmm. that five to fifteen minute ordeal, right? Tens of thousands of homes is gonna take every contractor in Colorado two years to re to recoup, right? Some people are gonna gain more top market share. Some people are gonna take less, right? Uh, but there's plenty of there's plenty of work out there all the time for everybody to work off of. So but yeah, it's it's a good that's a good thing to talk about. Is uh, that's one of the reasons I don't like look at all the competitors and be envious or things like that. It's I already know how much is out there. We just need to go find it. We just need to train our people well enough to find it and find it faster than the other people, right? And that's really that's that's where the fireworks starts happening. That's where your conversion ratios start increasing, your efficacy starts increasing, the amount of time is spent on certain things starts increase or decreasing, um, while uh, while simultaneously volume increasing. I mean, that's that's the overall goal: less input, more output. That's great. You know, piggybacking on that, mm -hmm. of we know how much work is out there. And I think one of the big mistakes that people fall into in in every industry, I've seen it in farm and ranch, I've seen it in all these different facets of, uh, I've worked in, you know, my mom has been a crafter for years and done all of those type of shows in that. And there's a scarcity mindset that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, creatives, young people getting into working for themselves run into of, well, somebody else is doing it. How am I going to compete? There is going to be a certain set of people that are always going to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, a, and then there's always going to be more people that want someone to do it for them. Mm -hmm. And so don't convince yourself that like hailed out is a thing we run into. But I think about it specifically from like the creative things that I've done of, you know, I've sold a lot of, specifically craft stuff because that's what I did a lot of in my youth of there's 75 different like it's coming up on Halloween so pumpkins of you know carved uh, wood pumpkins at a craft show but your style may not appeal to the next person and it's going to appeal to a lot of to other people and finding where you fit inside of that of like what makes yours different and applying that forward of like, how am I different? Why why do people want what I sell? Even though there's a bunch of people that are also doing this, why am I different? Mm -hmm. And knowing that there's more work than you can even think initially of like, that was one of the scarcity things I did when I started here of, there's a ton of people, because I started looking there's a ton of people that do this. Mm -hmm. How are we going to, how's this place going to make it? How are we going to do this in a market that's so saturated? And guess what? It's really not as saturated as you think because there's a certain set, set of people that are only going to do what they have to do to pay for the between three and six people that work for them, and that's all they ever want to be. Mm -hmm. They don't take up that much. Mm -hmm. There's also a certain set of people that are never going to you know, make it because it's hard. What we do is, you know, any entrepreneur is hard. Mm -hmm. So there's just a certain number of people that just aren't going to hack it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we, a major setback that a lot of young people, young, you know, entrepreneurs run into is 
there's no room for me. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah, people thinking about, like, it's funny. You always think of those million-dollar inventions and stuff like that. It's like, oh, somebody came up with it first. It's like, who cares? Make one better. Explain to your population why yours is better, right? Appeal to that niche, right? It, it, you can't in any way in life, you can't, you can't have a scarcity mindset for anything. Otherwise, all you ever do is hold very tightly to the things that you do have. And, you know, it's like the, is it 38 Special? Hold on loosely, right? You cling too tightly. <laughs> I got no idea. Right? It's, it's, it's the, the analogy that they're t singing about in this song is holding on to, like, sand. If you hold sand loosely in your hand, it stays there. Mm -hmm. If you hold it tightly, it forces itself out. Forces itself out, right? That's the kind of what happens, um, and it happens in your mind. It happens in your mannerisms. It happens in the way that you run your business. If you're not thinking in an abundance mindset, if you're not confident in what you have, you definitely shouldn't be there, right? You don't get into business if you don't have confidence that you can do it better than the rest of the population, right? And you get the rest of your life to play the game of keeping your, your business open and proving that your confidence was warranted, mm -hmm. right? And so that's the goal. I mean, the goal of business is to stay in business, right? It's in, and hopefully make a lot of money while you do it, right? <laughs> so, fun tickets? Fun tickets, yeah. So it's like, you know, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be instantaneously great, but if you're scared of your competition, you're scared of putting yourself out there, you're, you're not grounded in why you're doing this stuff, yeah, sure, you are gonna fail. It's gonna seem very scarce because nobody's gonna fucking buy anything from you, right? It's, it, we talk about this all the time with our salespeople. It's like people by nature absorb each other's emotions, right? It's like when you are communicating with somebody, if you are scared, they're gonna wonder why you're scared and they're gonna think maybe I should be scared. If you're awkward, they're gonna think this whole thing's awkward and they're gonna to wanna to turn around and leave. <laughs> right? But if you're confident and you're energetic and you're passionate because you care, they're gonna sit there and listen to you and buy whatever the hell it is that you have because they're like, I want some of that, right? And that's because this person is confident and they have an abundance mindset and that's all that you need to have. Competition out this, you know, doesn't even matter. Get them out of the way. Yes, there are great people. Yes, there's saturated. Yes, there's blah, 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 blah. But there's millions of homes, millions of homes. I have millions of opportunities to win that roof or win that siding job or win this. If I don't get it here, I need to focus on what I did wrong, analyze it, and only do that short, right, for a very short amount of time. I mean, we don't have time in business to sit around being sad about what we lost, right? We figure out what it was that made us lose it, and then we don't do that again, mm -hmm. right? We go rinse and repeat. Go find another one. Go find another one. Go find another one. That's the way it's going to be, and it's going to be that way forever. So keep working. Find people who want to work. But really, it's stay grounded in that. Stop worrying about your competition. They're going to set you back. You're going to lose jobs, right? You're going to lose to people who cheat, and it's going to piss you right the hell off. It happens every single day in our industry, right? But it's not going to stop us from doing business. It's not going to stop us from doing it the right way. I'm not going to adapt to that methodology. Mm -mm. Well, you, you you cheated, so I'm going to cheat? No. I'm still going to win. And when I win more times than you and you have to cheat just to get those little few, you know, those few that you get, I hope it pushes you out of the business because you shouldn't have been here in the first place. Absolutely. Right. And I think when we're talking about that of <coughs> the not adapting and, you know, stooping to the level of lesser competitors and things like that of things that we're not going to do in some of our you know natural human emotion and things like that was there ever a time period where we questioned not continuing <laughs> um, I shouldn't respond on this one uh, I mean there, there. Let, let, I'll put it this way: There has never been a point during this whole. Well, there has been one. There was one, and I actually referred back to that event. Um, there was one time where I thought I was going to be forced to, to close the business, not because we failed, but it was because of the whole transition of leadership and stuff like that. It was a moment of doubt, right? <clears throat> Outside of that, there's never been a point where I thought we need to shut it down. Um, I've never, never felt like we were inadequate to be here, so on and so forth. But every single day as a business owner, you question whether you made the right choice. 
but followed immediately after that is all of the reasons why that it was the right choice, right? You're always going to question things, right? Everybody has these lapses where like, is it ever going to get any better? Are we ever going to get past this? I wish I could just fucking fire everybody and start over, right? Or just never do it ever again, right? Everybody thinks about those things. You're, you're not wrong to think those things. It's stressful. It's hard. It feels like you're up against a giant all day long, every single day, and you're tired as shit, right? But at, at the end of the day, you're still standing, you're paying your bills, you're being a, a, a man or a woman, and you're doing your job, right? You're supporting yourself, you're supporting your family members. That's enough for me, right? And so it's, uh, yeah, every single day. <laughs> every <laughs> single day <laughs> is the answer to that. But it's, it, it, is it going to close? No, I'll never let that happen. And so <clears throat> what, I know the confidence and, you know, our, our, our hard-headedness is part of what drives that forward for us. But what other support systems did you have of like, is that people inside of the company of like, I know that you and I specifically have talked tremendously at times about, I mean, I can't tell you the number of times that jokingly in the evening when the frustration has been at, at its highest, there's been a very off the cuff snide, like, Fire everybody. We're d- <laughs> Fire everyone. Start over. Yeah. Of like, because you just have those moments, and well, you're in de- the you're moment you don't you don't mean it. Yeah, you don't you don't mean it. It's more or less like a like just let this out for a second and then then yeah. go back. But it's like you're dealing with humans, and pu- humans are error filled, and people make dumb choices, and and when people don't have skin in the game, that's the thing that's the hardest part for. Like for me to have ever have to learn how to cope with and comprehend is that almost nobody is going to care as much as I do. Mm-hmm. Almost nobody. Right Basically there. nobody. Right. Right. They don't have the same the same investment. They don't have that big weight on their shoulders. They don't have the, all the memories and all of the you know the, you know the sweat equity that you put into things. Right. And it's like it. it everybody's going to make choices that are dumb. Everybody's going to let emotions ruin certain trajectories that they have, so on and so forth. So you got to understand that, and you're going to get let down by people that you don't want to have let you down. Right. Um, but yeah, that's that's the thing. That's why that statement is said regularly. It's because it's just dumb stuff. <laughs> like. You know, I don't, I don't even know how to describe what I'm trying to say. It's like people make just such asinine decisions all the time. And unfortunately, you're paying them to make those decisions. So start to learn how to detrain bad habits, how to make sure they avoid those things, make sure they know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, right? Be an effective communicator and leader because <laughs> you're going to have some you're going to have some of those some of those days where you're just like I'm taking this jersey off from fucking burning it you know <laughs> and, there, and there is and like specifically from an owner standpoint and something a lot of young entrepreneurs are going to specifically struggle with is I don't understand why you don't care like I care because they don't yeah. they don't give a fuck if you fell or not <laughs> right of they just, this isn't just go get another job correct yeah you're never going to get the buy-in from them, but that doesn't mean the same level of buy-in, excuse me, mm-hmm. the same level of buy-in from an employee as an owner. Ultimately, remember, you're doing this because of the love of the chase. Mm-hmm. As an entrepreneur, you are... It, it should be exciting. If you're doing what you love, it should be exciting to wake up and chase it every single day even with the dumb stuff that goes on in business. Yep. And not everybody wants to chase it. Not everybody is looking to be the next... Mm, I can't think of any that I really respect enough to say. Gary Vaynerchuk. Not everyone's looking to be Gary Vaynerchuk. Of, I mean, chasing it to that level. Mm-hmm. You're just not going to get that. Out of... There's people that want to clock in nine to five, go home, spend time with their family because the thing that matters to them the most in the world is not necessarily the next level. 
It's, I want to be involved in every minute of my kid's life because my parents weren't involved in mine. Right. right. Or whatever their reason is. Everyone has a different reason for why they work or why they don't or what they chase. Mm -hmm. So expecting the same level of buy-in for what you do, even if they love it and want to do it for themselves, is crazy. And that's, I think that's a huge stumbling block and major like challenge and failure that a lot of young entrepreneurs run into is, I want you to care as much as I do. Why don't you care as much as I do? Mm-hmm. I do care in my own way. I want, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A, I'm here. I'm, I could have went in somewhere else and got another job and been the same level of successful. Even with the stress of like, especially new adventures cause, I'm here and I'm pushing forward with you. I have bought in. I am here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what you need at that moment. Those people that have been there, even through when it's been really hard, because there will be days that it is really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, the upside down days, whatever you want to call it, where everything just goes wrong. Yeah, (laughs) but yeah, no, um, I think that it's it's probably important. Don't uh, don't misconstrue what I'm saying as lower your expectations absolutely that's not not what i'm trying to say what i'm saying is i mean even fortune 500 companies will assess their productivity of their team members based off of a 70 percent scale meaning they're getting a hundred percent of what they need out of the operational agreement when they're hitting 70 percent of their expectation right and that's 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 that non buy not not buy-in but non skin in the game type of act that's an expectation that's reasonable Tax. right it's like they they're not at the end of the day going to be able to sell this thing one day in the future and make their dividend right they're just making what they're making and they're investing what they can invest so if you can get your team to 70 percent, and what you said about the you know the the family the people that 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 are working just the nine to five not wanting to scale but they want that they want that time with their family What's important as the entrepreneur or leader or, or of an organization is to find out what that why is. What is that, right? And then help them tailor their life with your organization to fit exactly that need, right? And it, 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 it's very simple. It's just find their why and align that why with their position and with your company vision, right? Because then you're marching in the same direction. Like I was talking about with the, the yoke, right? Or we were talking about it. It's like... If we're all coming here to do the same thing, although your, you know, your goal is something different, but it's in the same line, we're doing great. We're yeah. doing really great. And it's all about knowing your personnel, caring that they're here, asking them questions, and, and finding out what makes them tick. And then do your damnedest to make sure that you always help them get it to tick. Absolutely. What are some of the... <clears throat> Biggest lessons learned, biggest lessons from mistakes, common mistakes that I I know that we've covered a few in what we've been doing, but specifically talking about common mistakes that people going into business, young entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs make uh, going into business, but also how we transition some of those mistakes into growth and strategy. I think I did that with the very first first one which is not biting off more than you can chew Mm -hmm. right over investing your earnings and not having um any kind of real backup if something bad happens right there was some real questionable things that like if we wouldn't have been as strong as we were in those early years and found ways to to pay that bill or fix finish this job or do those types of things because we had already spent the money we wouldn't be here having this conversation, right? And that, that's a mixture of, well, I'm not a believer in luck. I believe that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. But in those cases, I think it was literally just bull will. No better way to say it. We just forced it, right? Um, so that's one of um, um, another lesson from mistakes that I could, I could give that I think is uh, pretty universal um, is... What's the best way to say this? Don't be too quick to hire people, right? Do as much as you can yourself 
until you've met a true limit before you start offloading responsibility, right? Do it to like max out what your ability is so that you can measure your boundaries and find out, okay, this is what I'm, uh, this is, this is, this is my value in an eight hour day. This is what I can achieve. Um, I'm not going to be able to achieve what I want to achieve in anything less than that. So it's time to bring somebody in. Wait until then, because if you just start hiring people and you start bringing people in, all it's going to do is add a compounded stress and it's going to take your effic efficacy away to train those people. Right. So make sure it's at the right time. That's a really important one is don't just hire for the sake of having more bodies and feeling more successful. Hire when there's a need to hire. Right. That's that's a really I think that's a pretty useful piece. Absolutely. I think the other one uh, when I'm talking about systems of sometimes there's a desire to save for the sake of saving mm -hmm. of I know that there's been and this is a thing I struggle against of like we're not going to spend money here at all because we don't really need to. But then you bake in inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. of little things that like didn't seem like a big deal at the time. Something as simple as having an email where all your receipts go, but mm -hmm. you were just sending them to yourself because mm -hmm. you didn't want to pay for, you know, an $18 email or whatever it may be mm -hmm. of we bake in inefficiency until it becomes a huge, like instead of it being a small problem, there's a big problem. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, now I got to transition this. Mm -hmm. And then it's, okay, do I forward everything out over to that one so it all lives in one place or do I leave it here? Like, how do I properly handle this? You're going to do those things anyway. There's going to be times where you just, I'm doing it this way because it's what makes sense and it's to keep my overhead down, I have to. Mm -hmm. But also understanding that some of those mistakes hurt later on okay. of like it creates a, a different problem that you have to fix later. Yeah. I mean, that can be more of a vague, vague answer or not. That was a, um, system specific. That was a system systems specific, but the, the vague, but very applicable answer to a lot of things, um, is that the baked in inefficiencies, right? Think more than one step ahead, right? Think from the solution backwards. Mm -hmm. Just think from the result that you want backwards, right? Because if you do this, what you're talking about, right, what eventually has to happen is there's going to be a reckoning, right? You've got to fix it. And in order to fix it, you're going to have to go back and analyze all the things that you've done within this email, if that's the case or whatever it is, pull all that data, redo and upload that data. It's just a, it's an incredible time waste and time expense that could have been avoided through just thinking a few steps ahead. Absolutely. Right. Thinking, utilizing tools, things like that, those, mm -hmm. that can be really powerful. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a mistake that lots of, lots of folks make of we're so used to doing it one way and there's tools that can help us do it and be more efficient. And that's where you're talking about maximizing what you can do. Mm -hmm maybe there's a solution of like, okay, I'm at my eight hours of like, before you bring someone on of like hiring when you need to hire, is there a tool that can make me better, better initially to delay that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should always keep a mantra of automate, delegate, eliminate in that order. Right. Like it's like, well, eliminate can kind of push around a little bit, but is there a way that I can get you know, the 21st century technology to help me with this so I can speed things along? Is there a software that I could use that's going to be able to categorize and place this data and help me blah, 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 blah right? Um, so can I automate this so it's not time consuming? And if it's not, then is it necessary? So I guess it would be automate, eliminate, delegate. But is it necessary? Yes, it's necessary, so I need to delegate it. Now it's time to put it in somebody else's hands and teach them how to do it. Absolutely. Right. So um, as far as yeah, there's, there's probably a thousand mistakes that I could talk about with you on here, but I think some of the most important ones are just to kind of summarize everything is make sure you're foreshadowing. 
make sure you're thinking about what you what you want to achieve and working it backwards um, before you start making sweeping changes. That's a big deal. Don't change your processes on a whim. Think things out. Um, that's I should have said that probably first. That was one of the things that we failed at. My previous partner did more 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 damage than good, even though they were good ideas. When there would be a sweeping change out of the blue, because you'd lose traction and things like that, and you got to plan, you got to use strategy, you got to. This is not checkers. This is chess, right? You got to think seven steps ahead if you want to get into a checkmate. Yeah, right. the sweeping changes of like mistakes that young that young entrepreneurs and I don't that's not speaking necessarily at age it's people new into entrepreneurship is when I say that but I think that's a mistake that lots of people make of this isn't working I'm going to change it and especially if you're to the point of having people work for you that can totally derail there's personalities that you have to consider of like a complete sweeping change could make a person unwilling to work for you Mm -hmm. because well, I liked the way we were doing it. Yeah, and the environment of inconsistency. Correct. Right? Always feeling like you don't know how to do your job because it's always changing. Uh, yeah, that uh, being afraid of, you know, like you said, of everything's constantly changing. And so it's really hard. It's really hard to be here because I constantly don't know what I'm doing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So analyze. Use strategy. Have some balls. Know that you're going to make mistakes, <laughs> and mistakes aren't. I just pack two of them together, but it's like <laughs> you do. You need you need to have a head on your shoulders, and you need to be carrying around a pair, girl or guy. You're going to go through some tough shit. Absolutely, and you're going to make mistakes, and that's where that failing forward yep. is a huge, a huge part of everything you do. Yep. So uh, I guess that's it. So, yeah, we, I can't talk enough about everyone. You're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be a thing that you constantly fight through. So we would love to have conversations specifically about like, what are some mistakes that you've ran into? Maybe we didn't cover it. Things that other young, young entrepreneurs might benefit from leave us comments about that things that you've ran into in the comments on the youtube or uh, any of our posts on instagram we'd love to interact with you guys and have some conversations about the subjects we're talking to we'd also love to hear any ideas for subjects of questions that you guys have ran into as other entrepreneurs and just the questions you have and how we could help and answer any questions things we ran into and we're going to be talking next week um, with some more on this, f- the initial five years and things you run into. And we will talk to you then. <laughs> I don't want to cover this up. I'm Ron Burgundy. And I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Who put a question mark on the teleprompter? <laughs> Uh, All right. Uh, Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you on the flip side. Later. Cut on that one.